Welcome to the channel. Today we will review the Brigand B1. The Brigand B1 is a tier 4 BR 4.7 heavy fighter and light bomber. For the specs top speed on WEP tops 560 km per hour on the level. It climbs at a refreshing 15 meters per second at sea level, but this declines with altitude. But you shouldn't need to rely on climbing because you get a bomb. The Santorus engines, from the likes of the Tempest II, produce 2,470 horsepower each, but fully loaded, weighs more than three times more than the Tempest II at just under 17,700 kilograms. As for flight characteristics, it's a mixed bag. While it is sluggish to accelerate, it turns very nicely. Turn time being a brisk 26 seconds and it doesn't lose too much speed provided you power through the turn and avoid using flaps. Speaking of flaps, combat flaps rip at around 450 km per hour which is decent. It does have air brakes but they aren't very strong. They will not save you from breaking your wings in a high dive if you don't regulate your speed. Rip speed for wings is 680 km per hour at 1 km. It is not a good diver in that respect. Payload is decent if you think of this as a close air support to Tiger and it excels in this role. It can equip two 500 pounds or two 1000 pounds bombs, 16 RP3, S16 RP3 and 2500 pounds on the nose of 420 mm cannons with 800 rounds. Standard British fare. As for armor, it can merely defend against rifle caliber rounds being 12.7 mm thick around the pilot. This can help in a head on, but don't expect it to save you every time. Durability is where this plane really shines, and I can attest to that. I made a Yak 9 run out of ammo shooting at my fuselage, with at least 5 direct hits from the 37 mm. This was due to the large, empty fuselage and the maneuverability of the Brigand. Tail control still intact, I made it back to base and repaired. Tail control surfaces are redundant and the pilot is pretty well protected. So a tip for destroying this would be to aim at the wings where fuel tanks are concentrated and the engines. This can barely maintain altitude with one engine and if the second is even slightly damaged yellow, it is a glider. Roles where the brigand excels are bomber hunting, especially of the Hokkaido training map. Attacker and Kaz. As a heavy fighter you'll be let down by your inferior handling compared to single engine fighters. Notable exceptions are against American teams, where P-51s and F-4Us found at the tier simply cannot outturn you, but they can starve you of energy. As a bomber hunter, I take rockets for lols and air targets ammo. If the rockets don't get you the 20s sure will, and the durability helps a lot against the gunners. For ground attack roll, I take the maximum load and go for softer targets, medium tanks, then go for the softest targets, AAA, once out of bombs and rockets. Makes about 3,500 points a match. In tanks at that BR 5.0, your payload is highly effective. I also had a lot of luck when I paired it with my Centurion MK-10, a top tier the new SPAAS will eat you for breakfast due to your speed unless you get the jump on the Let's go over pros and cons. Pros. Bomber spawn. Good maneuverability. Air brakes. Durability. Decent load for Kaz. Cons. No tail gunner, not that you need it. Poor diving speed. Poor acceleration after 400 km per hour. Overall the Brigand is a somewhat versatile aircraft that performs decently for its tier and excels in durability. This concludes my overview of the Brigand B1. Thank you for watching. Joe Xer out.